She's the one that wanted to marry me. And she, that Abdul Malik told her, Imam Musa won't, won't marry you because, you know, he's funny acting. And uh, he, told, he told the girl, uh, she was a UC Berkeley student, graduate in fact, that he was kind of loose up here on campus. So I told everybody that wouldn't have been no minus, that would have been a plus. <laughs> in other words, if we come out of that gangster criminal world, how are we going to tell some sister, I'm not going to marry you because you're not an uh, old time church going woman and all of that dumb stuff. That would be unfair, right? So if there's a woman, she told Abdul Malik, hey, uh, talk with Imam Musa because he said, like, you got two wives already and I want to marry him because of the movement. And I think she was telling the truth. Whatever it was, uh, she was a nice lady. That's the one that cut Abdul Malik's throat. He married her, boy, but I tell you, she got him back so bad. And I used to ask her, because she would call me every day. I said, you got to stop calling me because you're married to so-and-so. Oh, I just have a question about some kind of way. And so, uh, we call her Holly Berry because she looked like Holly Berry, you know, just like that almost. So I said, man, I don't know whether, I didn't know whether she, even today, whether that was a, a little trap or whether it was real. What I mean is, I take it like it was real. She wanted to get married. Da, 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 da. And then, or did Abdul Malik marry her and then have her continue on with the pursuit and I could slip off with her and that would destroy your credibility, you know, because that's what people be trying to do. A lot of people are not paying attention to that. They don't care. They got a thing out right now about uh, Hillary Clinton talking about Bill Clinton. You know, when they did marital stuff. And Bill, you're talking about somebody crazy. You remember Hillary Clinton back in the day, right? That's the healthiest white woman ever been in the White House. When she was, that girl was put together neatly. It's just, there it is. I didn't know about it paying no attention. It's just that that was the help. Why he had to go, them old pointed nose white women and frizzly head girls, he was messing. I said, man, you got to be the dumbest guy in the world. Something's wrong with you. You got Miss Tinder in the White House. You know, and you running around, look at him 30 years ago, 20 years, even 20. Just look on back to see, and then see if you can see a picture. She was riding a bicycle, and he, uh, Bill was mad because she had her legs covered up with them, whatever they call them things. But you could see the size of them boys, you know. And he go running. I saw, I don't know whether Jennifer Flowers and them, all them people. Mm -hmm. I said, man, those are hillbilly Peckerwood women. Tell the truth. He was messing with hillbilly Peckerwood. They looked like, you know, the Beverly Hillbillies type people. Not the good looking girl, but grandma. <laughs> uh, Beverly Hillbilly. It was uh, unbelievable, right? Now they think, you got to think of it. That man had a powerful position in the world, but he put vagina before everything. The man is crazy. That's why the Hadith say that the greatest challenge they left behind for men is women. That's not, that's with most, but some people are just not, you know, that just same day, cup of soup, whatever it is. Okay, so basically, personally, they made 
mistakes. The first mistake was on that they think you're going to chase all the women in town. And for most men, that's why they want power and money, so they can have more women. That's the purpose of it. Hmm. That's the purpose they get money, you know, so they can have more women. They, not to have to do good and help, but they want more girls. Or they power, they want to run people's lives. Those are sicknesses. Those are illnesses. Okay, so the beautiful thing about this is that they designed their whole plan around what everybody else do, right? But when I showed y'all the pictures the other day, I got a chance to go through all that when I was young. I got a chance to go through all that, to have all the money. All I did was kept a little for myself and spent the rest on everybody else, right? And it ain't nobody in Oakland to tell you that, yeah, he ran off with my woman and he did this. Everybody that's got power mess with somebody sooner or later, sometime, except me. I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. And everybody knows that. Okay, so that's the point where you find a few little differences. There's nothing bad about that. That is good. You know why it's good? Because that means that uh, you don't have to worry about those little extras here and there that they do. So, uh, all the stuff we talk about is not speculation. We have said this a thousand times. We try and we test everything that we have said, minimum of 20 times. So, if we said something about Abdul Malik, we didn't test it a thousand times. And they're the amateurs. You gotta remember, why are they amateurs? They're amateurs because they went to school and they studied what the white man told them to study. And they believe what the white man told them. Now, if you fail a test in school, well, you need to take the class over or something. But if you fail any test out there in Jaili, you're gonna come up missing or in prison or something, right? You don't get to say, hold it man, uh, let me go back and try that again. The niggas don't do that, right? The police don't do that. And just to be, I don't, did I ever show you my arrest record in Oakland? Page after page, and each page has, I don't know how many arrests on it. I'm gonna show that in court when I go out there. I got that from the Alameda County Courthouse, but I got it for a case back in 73 or 74 to show the pattern of behavior of the police then. I was saying that this was, all this stuff was the police doing this. And the police didn't have no record. They had, they had a record that I was arrested three or four times. And I was arrested a hundred times or, or more. I was arrested three times in 1970, April Fool's Day. Three times in one day. One day. Yeah. They didn't have that on the record because it shows how can you do that? That's harassment. That's right. So that's what I was showing. Anyway. The uh, Jack Johnson, Muhammad Ali style. Jack Johnson was a champion when it, it wasn't no, he was the first black champion and he treated white folks so bad they didn't let another one come up till uh, Joe Lewis 30 years later or something, 20 something years later. Because he was, and Joe Lewis had rules. You cannot smile at white women, and you can't let they had a whole thing going from Jack Johnson's time. And Jack Johnson was in isolation. Jack Johnson told uh, Joe Lewis when he was going to fight uh, uh, the German. 
Max Mellon. The first time he lost, he said, let me show you what to do. He wouldn't do it. He lost. Uh, but Jack Johnson, he did all right. He hung on to 1946. And he had one of the bad Lincoln Zephyrs. And he went over the white line and, and crashed or something. And the white folks was happy. He said he crossed the white line for the last time. The great white hope. Can you imagine how the people was that uh, they gonna have? They had a international search for any white man that could whoop him. The great white hope, and he would be the great. What they called the, the, you are the great white hope to save. White folks, they, they pride, and he whooped the stew out of that boy, and then teased him. Oh, Mr. Jeff, you, can you imagine you in the, in the ring with this nigga? And he just tell you, oh, Mr. Jeff, I'm finna hit you in the tummy. Watch this, Mr. Jeff, bah, he hit him. And he can't do nothing. He can't quit and get out of the rain because the white folks will be too mad. And he got to stand there with that nigga, oh, Mr. Jeff, and he acting a clown. That's why I say, we use a Jack Johnson, Muhammad Ali style. More gonna fall in four, right? Remember that calling around? That's the way we do white folks. That's the way we have done them all along. Then we saw oh, white folks, you know, just playing with y'all. And the Negroes too. You cannot go to school and sit in that classroom and learn, get the game on nothing except what the white folks give you. So the white folks have, this is a so-and-so nigger here. We're gonna give you this asset, that asset, da-da-da-da-da, and when you move on him, he's gonna act like this. Well, years ago, they used to tell all the Negroes, yeah, we're corporate, we're gonna, uh, and we're gonna move. They don't tell the Negroes anymore. Now they down to, uh, what do they call it, need to know basis. They tell each Negro what his job is. And they won't know the other's job, unless they are part of a collective. Why? Because at first they knew, we're going to knock this nigga out of the box. We're going to knock this nigga out of the box. He got a few more months. And all the record shows that. There ain't nobody that lasted that long and that important. When I say important, I don't mean saying I am important, but the mission we have, the forecasts that we make, the analysis that we make, the lectures that we make, the demonstrations when they was happening that we were involved in were all important. All of it was very important. How could all of them people how could all, even the white folks, answer and the, the white lawyer women and the, the Negro this and that? How can they all just up and poof and disappear and don't call? They're not, uh, how come nobody, what, is it some magic? You know, did a nigga put on something and he smelled bad? And, or what is it that nobody, right, on the surface? wants to show up. That's because uh, some reasons. Everybody have to figure it out for themselves. Okay. Abdul Malik said, and I'll move toward a close because we got, uh, well, we'll go over some of this later. Abdul Malik in 1992, he said, well, uh, All the time I, would, I was there in Oakland, uh, he supposed that in, 19, in 1987, he bought Sister Bahia there. And Sister Bahia was part of the AR all afternoon, Stokely Carmichael's crew. Yeah. And the guy she was with was number one Stokely Carmichael's Man, yeah, that was the So, Abdul Malik convinced her, Oakland is where, that's the future of the movement. 
them guys that's finished, it's not important. He was technically correct. He brought her there for me to marry her. I mean, for years, he would say, I feel in the most different ways, she's going to make someone a wonderful wife. Over and over and over again. Over and over again. So then he says, well, they get a divorce, he said, he uses this term, just trust me. I said, okay, I didn't say that. Remember, they're smart and I'm slow. And everybody, he didn't say this to me 10,000 times, she's going to make somebody a beautiful wife. So what I'm doing is, just so everybody knows, I'm giving all of them a chance to live up to their own statements. Everybody in Oakland, that's what they got. All these people in LA, the two crews in LA, that's what they got. They got an opportunity. The other centers everywhere, everybody's getting a chance to live out their own expectation. You said it, now let's see what you're gonna do. We never, for one day, if I didn't trump, trust Abdul Malik, how am I trust Sister Bahia? And he was married to her. It's insanity. <laughs> it's insanity. Right? And everything, when I got my blood work in South Africa, they had remember that big rich crew that I was telling you after Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui said such and such. They had started before that. But forget about that. So in uh, 98, 99, 2000, they had this uh, low carb diet stuff for them over there. They had a doctor that he would take your blood test and he would uh, give you a prescription on what, how you should eat based on your blood work. The reason I'm saying this, I listened on the radio the other day and they was talk, one guy was talking about how they can study your blood and they could tell, now they could tell so much, it's unbelievable. He <laughs> said, man, we can tell about almost when you're going to leave here. Your susceptibility to diseases and all of that is right there in your blood. You know, so... They took my blood test. Now everybody else, they gave them a list of what they should eat and what they should. When I went to the doctor and he took mine, and I, I came back for an interview, he said, you don't have to do nothing. Yours is fine. Well, that's fine. But it was, wasn't but a little while later. We'll even go in 92. When she got here, I started having blisters on my leg, and my leg swole up. That's when I first got to, <laughs> now I'm running every day, miles and miles. I'm running with sweat gear. I'm not in no bad, this is back in 92. Within a couple of months, I'm swole up. I'm swole up, so they pull it back for a minute, and then, when I would mention, yeah, the people, this is funny, like, they would always take those people's side, like, oh, don't mean 